Born and raised in Eldoret in Wasingishu County, we find our hero getting molded into what we celebrate today, a hero of change. Kwa machina naituwa maa Sirini Nyavoni, ni mama wa tuto watatu. Deni Sirini Mchua 2011, kupitia basketball. Halikuja kaniomba mtoto, first born wangu. Hakaniambia ni kona mari na fanya training ya basketball. Naisa ni pia mtoto. Nika... Nikampea lakini sisi ku, ku yani si kumpea tu kabisa ile tu kinusunusu sasa ikakuwa wanaenda wanacheza mara nyingine wanaenda nje hivyo tu kidogo kidogo la sasa sengine mtoto anacherewa na mchapo na mwambie sasa next week uwezi enda but yaka alikuwa anajificha kumbe ilikuwa talent yake na mimi nilikuwa namsuia wakaendelea tu hivyo hivyo Alafu ikafika wakati sasa wakati nimemsuia kwenda akaingia kwa grupu mbaya. Lakini tena naye akaanza kuwafuatilia. Sasa akaniuliza mbona uliacha mtoto akaacha kukucha basketball. Nikamwambia basketball labda ndio inamwaribu. Bati akaniambia hapana, nipea yeye. Nikampea sasa kabisa sasa vizuri. Sasa ndio wakati aliingia hapo mtoto aliacha alikuwa ameingia grupu mbaya ya kutembea huko shule hayafiki. Wakati alisika basketball akakuwa na tisprin. So ikawa imemsaidia mpaka akamaliza class 8 kufika form 1 wakamchukua wakamuingiza form 1 wamemsomesa hiyo kibali yake imemsomesa mpaka amemaliza form 4 eh, ameingia college. Bado hiyo ndiye anacheza sister yake pia amemaliza kwa hiyo ameingia naye anatafutiwa so, nini sure baada ataingia. Alafu mdogo naye ameingia bado sasa wote wako hiyo timu. Kwa hivyo nimemchuria hapo, ni kichana mzuri ametusaidia. Wakati mtoto wangu ndio walianza hiyo basketball, hawa watu wako anachua. Watu wakaanza kunichekelea wakisema, nimeachilia watoto juu sisiwezi, wanacheza basketball waende shule. Lakini wakati waliona watu walikuwa wanacheka wanasema hao watakuwa chokora. Wakati walifanya class 8 mtoto wangu wa kwanza, hawa kujua na yeye saitika nipelekewe mtoto shule. Wakati mtoto wangu aliingia shule ndio wa kwanza kuichoin form 1. Sasa hiyo mali naishi watu wote waliingia, watoto waliachia watoto wao wakaingia hiyo basketball. Sasa kila mtu alikuwa anatafuta deno. Namwambia niko na mtoto, si nitureinie. Sasa ndio tukachuana hivyo mpaka saa hii. Kwa majina naitwa Jenike Munto Getugi. U coach amekuwa kama babangu na mheshimu. Amekuwa akinisupport sana. Amenitafutia shule kadhaa kama singeweza si kufika buruburu girls nilikuwa muwa girls huko Machakos vile nilimjua akanisaidia sana siku anajua baki kusema kweli akanisaidia nikafika buruburu girls eh hadi nimemaliza amekuwa kitusaidia yani support kidogo alikuwa anisaidia hadi kuna ametengeneza group tulikuwa tunaenda tunasoma eh yani uko cha ametusaidia sana i'm susan asami Coaches wetu wako very supportive like we, we ni karafiki yetu uwezi uwezi ogopa if you have a, if you have any problem you just go to them they will help you out my name is Dennis Orek um, I'm the head coach uh, of Olympic High School call them the Tigresses and I also do I also have a basketball program call it the Little Prince Basketball Academy coming to Nairobi for further studies Derek was faced with an extremely different kind of environment that he had never anticipated to see a hostile slum life. Will our hero survive? I was born and raised in Eldoret. So I went to I went to Saseni Primary School in LD. High school I went to Simoto High School. Uh, just outside the Lino Tufa. Uh, then uh, college I came to uh, Railway Training Institute in South B. Uh, so most of my childhood life i grew up in eldoret yeah all the way to around probably when i was 17 18 and then i came to to railway training institute uh that's when now actually transferred totally to come and stay in nairobi and in kibera yeah so i stayed in darajani darajani is not far from olympic high school so that's why i stayed uh with my mom in eldoret life was fun because of the uh the village type of life 
uh, a lot of trees, a lot of forests. Uh, it was it was great, and and because my dad was a teacher, so he lived in a school. So at least I got to play basketball, got to make a lot of friends and have fun. Uh, a lot of primary time I stayed with my aunt because uh, of my family uh, split, so I stayed with my aunt most of the time. Uh, so it was actually great learning. Uh, it was a, a great learning from, from my dad and from my aunt, different things, uh, getting to, life, to learn much about life. And of course, having to grow uh, in that setup actually built me, I uh, can say character-wise, because my aunt believed so much uh, in kindness. In Eldoret, life was, was simpler and it was easier. Uh, compared with Nairobi, having now to transfer and come and live in Nairobi, I think like Nairobi was a big challenge. Uh, there, there was so much, you know, in Eldoret you live in, in, in some sort of, a, it's like a small village. So you know all the neighbors around, you're friendly to each other, you know every, every person, you, you interact a lot. But coming to Nairobi, it was more of, it's your house, uh, you know, it's, uh, as much as in the slums, there, there's, that, there, there's that thing of, there's that difference, there's, it, it's not really open, it's not as open as it was in, in El, cause, in Eldoret, you, you live a life where if you have a problem, you can always approach anybody within and you'll be helped. And it's like they have that, uh, it, it's, they have that openness to even, even I can say punish you. If you make a mistake and your neighbor sees you, uh, it will be easier. Uh, that neighbor can punish you even before you get your parent. Uh, but then in Nairobi, life was different. Because uh, in Nairobi, it was more of everybody wants to live their own life. So even if you make a mistake and your neighbor sees you, they won't be really, really bothered. Uh, and, it was, and, and again, Nairobi was really challenging, uh, dealing with the trust issues, because you are told here you don't trust anyone, uh, you have to be very careful. And of course, coming from a place as a child where you live freely, as in it's, it's a free life, you know you'll always be taken care of. But then you come to Nairobi and then the challenges are just immense, you know, it's like, the, the, the environment is not forgiving to a child. So it was, it was, it was really hard. And of course, finding myself in the slum, uh, that made it even uh, harder for me. Because now, suddenly, you are interacting in a different environment, sometimes very hostile, regardless of whether you are a grown-up or a child. And so you have to actually put up with all these challenges and try to figure uh, your life around it. Yeah. The fine basketball player and now a coach tells me how he ended up in this game, not forgetting this one special moment that would lead him to his turning point. I started playing basketball when I was 12. Yeah. And it was very much because my dad is a teacher, high school teacher. So he was transferred to a school, it's called Kaptagat Girls. Uh, so that's where. I learned basketball because when my dad was transferred, I went to live with him, not for, for, for a while, for I think a year. Uh, so when we went there, they had a basketball court and they had a basketball team. And the school had a basketball captain. She was a very nice uh, girl. Her name was Caro. So Caro is the one who introduced me uh, to basketball because I would go uh, at four because it's a school set up by four, you're bored. And, 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 and the, the basketball court was close to the teacher's quarters. So I would go there, and, and there, was a, there was a library. So I would go to the library, uh, do a, uh, some reading, and then, because we had some nice storybooks, so when, at four when the library is closed so that guys can go to the, to the court, I will just walk and just go in there and watch. Because uh, of course that it was a new spot, I was used to football, and suddenly there was a new spot. So I spent a lot of time uh, just watching those girls train and play. And then Caro called me and told me, why don't you come and try? Of course I was small then. But she, she taught me some of the first basics of basketball. And from there, I just picked it. I think I liked it. And uh, from there, I just played. Uh, and then when I went back to stay with my aunt, because now she, she was staying in the, in the center of the town, uh, there, there, there were several courts and there were several teams. And there were kids. So I got now to play with kids my age. And for me, I think the passion just picked from there. Uh, from then, I, I never looked back. Uh, prim, part of primary school and then I went to high school. Uh, I played for the school team. Uh, I didn't play much uh, in the college because by then I started focusing on I can, I can coach. 
So it was to me it was more fun coaching than playing. Though I play I play I played for a club for I think two or three years. Uh, but then I was I think I was so much inclined into into coaching because I really loved the fact that uh, someone taught me basketball and, and she was very nice and so I loved it. I loved the fact that oh so you can teach this into someone and, and, and just you no know, get them to come to a place where they can I, they can you know play well. And so that basically is how I came into the sport and then I completely turned into turned to coaching and it's been a great journey so far. I'm fully into coaching but if you look at it from what I studied in HR, coaching is HR throughout because you are managing people, you're managing situations around people, issues around people uh, and of course uh, since now I also have a basketball program I get to manage it, so HR has, I think has played a, a good role. The soft-spoken coach reveals to me what inspired him to be a warrior for youngsters and not a spectator of what ordinary people would refer to as let nature take its course and motivation. Little Prince Basketball Academy uh, started in 2010 and it started out of, out of, out of something not really good. Because uh, I think I was at, I was in a court and there were some kids playing, and then one of the one of the people who was one of the the guys who was playing actually slapped a kid, and I really felt bad because this kid was there. It reminded me of the first time I went to to a basketball court is because I was going to watch, just stay there and watch. So this kid had come to watch, but because of an, an incident that I think was uncalled for, I think the kid ended up being slapped, and so it made me realize that these kids had come here to play, but they had no opportunity to play. Because you know the grown-ups are always there, you know, and for as long as the grown-ups were there, the kids were told to you know, sit aside and to just watch. So they had no opportunity to play. And so I thought, how about we begin a program for the kids, uh, so where the kids can just have their time. If it's one hour or two hours, they just come and play. You know, their own time. They have fun with their uh, age mates. And so that's how the program started. Started with, I think, with four kids. Uh, that was back in 2010. And doing the math up to now, I think so far we have worked with over 300 kids who have come through the program through primary, they have gone to high school, and most of them are right now in the universities. Parents come to look for you and say, hey, how do you, how do you, how do you even do it? Because at home, most of these kids, at home the parents have said, oh, you just live your life, the, the, the world will teach you. But then, at the end of the day, you don't forget this is a kid, probably he's 14, 15, so you still have time to actually, so by the time in the program, you talk to them, you know, you take them through the program, you teach them uh, discipline. By the time they are getting to 17, 18, you can really see their change, you can really talk to them, and you can really reason with them, which to me gives me a lot of fulfillment. And the fact that they go through school, you know, they finish high school, they go to college, you know, and get, they actually get to do something with their, meaningful with their life. That, to me, that's important. I am going to usimwache na kama mtoto akona talent muachilie aje sasa kwa hiyo talent itamsaidia kwa sababu kama mimi niko na usuta kama sio talent mimi si, sijui watu wangu wangekuwa sahi kiwata ni kuna wakati nimechangiwa pesa nikaambiwa nipeleke watoto nyumbani sitaweza lakini nashukuru Mungu mwenye alipata nisa na deno watoto wangu wamemaliza shughuli tena watu wamefurahia wanawapenda wako na discipline watoto wesima wananenewa mambo mazuri Koifu na shukuru sana. Nilianza hii mchezo nikiwa katika darasa la 4 na nika imenisaidia nimefika nimefika hadi form 4 nimecheza nimefika di East Africa huko Tanzania nimefika Nakuru eh He has an eye of hope. His success is visible and open for all to see. Mimi natika kufanya HR human resource Eh, na natika na, kujoin African Nazarene. Siezi achana na hii mchezo, hii ni kama dawa. Eh, <laughs> siezi kabisa. Juu, nikiacha, neza kuwa, neza get into drugs. Neza kuwa, nikizurura kama umbu wa koko yuku inje. Eh, bake, eh, siezi acha. Zoezi likuwa ngumu, lakini juu nilipo, nilikuwa nataka hizo viatu sana. So, ndo nikachukua. Don't when you are in person, kind of like check. I mean, peleka places like to learn that is it. It's quite you want to fit out. Now within the country, uh, the community has really been helpful. 
because uh, I think they understand uh, the, the, the important uh, role that we play. And the program, most of the, uh, for the, since 2010, I think the program has been financed by either friends, well wishes, people from the community. We have parents who have actually come out to actually support uh, the program. And the community, one thing, the way I've known that the community actually accepted the program is the fact that if a kid does somewhere, something outside there, someone will come to you and say, Coach, I saw your kid. I know he or she was doing this and this and this. And so when you get that sort of feedback, you know, okay, now the community understands what we are doing and the community is behind us. And that's how, even, even the school where we train, uh, the principal has already, has already been uh, supportive because uh, he, he understands. So he says the schools should be opened. When the schools are closed, the kids literally stay there from morning 8 uh, to 7 in the evening. And, and, and he's open to it. And even, even the community around uh, the court, they actually, they actually come and ask, how, is it, how, how can we help? So there are people who come out and say, I'll buy shoes for the kids. Or, actually, there's someone actually bought food. They, during the April holidays, so a very long holiday. So he told us, well, how, how do these kids survive the whole day? And they say, you know, for this April holiday, I'll, I'll, buy, them, I'll buy them lunch. Touching one life after another, clearly there is hope not only physical, but even mental development to a have an over healthy holistic society. Running the program actually is a big challenge because uh, of course it, and, and basketball is really a very expensive sport, uh, but we, we spend uh, a lot of time actually uh, looking for people to support. So we approach, normally people have played basketball who understand basketball, who are our friends. Uh, so we, we, we look for most of them. Uh, we look for parents, the parents who actually can uh, support. We have had, because we have kids, the good thing about sport is the way it brings people together. So we have kids from the slums, but we also have kids from the high-end estates who have joined. Because I think we have kids who come from as far as Karen and you know, Livington who come to, to actually play uh, and, and, and actually train with these kids. So we have actually had to approach their, uh, their parents who have been very positive, you know, supporting the program. And then I've also, also reached out to NGOs. Uh, we have organizations uh, that actually are willing to support kids and, 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 they, and they actually come in strong to actually help and you know, finance, especially buying basketballs. And you know, some of them have been built courts, which is something really big. Uh, so you have a nice facility. And you get jerseys, you get basketballs. And sometimes when you go for games, people actually pay uh, for those trips. We got uh, to this court through one of the NGOs that uh, we actually work close with because uh, they were doing a girls only program. It's called the High of Hope. And so they approached us if we can help them run uh, the, the program. And so we are open to it because their target was girls who are in high schools. And as I said uh, before, getting parents to release girls to come and play was actually one of the biggest challenges we were facing. So suddenly we got someone who was doing the same thing we are doing and they were willing to go to the schools and of course actually get to, to reach out to, uh, to these girls. So we, we, we've been working with them. So we worked with, uh, in Riley Educational Center, that was the first school we worked, we got some, the program took off, it was really nice, came up with some very nice uh, kids who went all the way to the university and then the next code they were built, actually that's how we are here. Uh, so they came here, we started a program here, I think for the last four years uh, we have had a basketball program here the girls team so the organization was uh, supporting the girls team and we are the ones who are actually managing the team uh, and coaching them uh, giving our expertise uh, so the girls played all the way to the east africa which was really interesting because these are the girls who have played basketball for three or four years but they came into, into the high school competition uh, won the nairobi championship went to the nationals finish they finished second and they went all the way to the to the east african championship which was a big, uh, a really big, big, uh, something really big in the community. It's a big achievement. And because of that, people actually, uh, people actually impressed that this is a team that did not even have a basketball court. And they had to walk, I think, around three or so kilometers every day in the evening to come and, uh, to come and train uh, in our court, and then, of course, go back home. Despite all these challenges, they held on to go all the way uh, to the South African Championship. And so because of that, people are really impressed. And that's why someone actually decided to fundraise uh, for them to have a court. 
and the rest, as you say, it's a beautiful history. They have a very nice facility, uh, very nice basketball facility. The kids are enjoying themselves. It's a state-of-the-art facility. Currently, we have 26 girls who are training here. Uh, last, uh, we have some who actually finished high school last year. So they joined the then university, they moved on. So we have new kids. I think we have around 15 new girls who joined this year. So combined from some from last year, we have around 26. Derek talks about discipline, advice, and final remarks. Our biggest secret has always been to reach out to the person first. Because I know sometimes when people come, we want to train them to win. And then you forget that these are human beings. So you always say, before she's a, a basketball player, she's a human being. So we reach out to the human, the human side of, 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 of her first, so that she create a relationship. So that they understand, I'm not here to train to win, I'm here to train to be a better person. So now they shift, they start focusing on building their character. And if you look at the, the team that last year went all the way to the East Africa, it wasn't the best team, but they are the best character. They will really fight, because now we had a relationship. It came to a point where they are playing, knowing I'm playing for myself, I'm better. Uh, she, uh, this other, my opponent may be may probably coming from a better school, uh, but I know, I believe in myself. So you create, it, it, it becomes uh, self-belief. And, and one of the things that we believe in, uh, we believe in self-discipline. That's the first thing we teach them. We teach them self-discipline so that they understand when you do something, it's not, you know, because most of the kids, they come to school because if they stay home, they'll, probably they'll be punished. So they're doing it because I don't want to make my parent angry. When they come to school, they stay in class because if I'm, I'm out of class, I'll be punished. So there's always some, something they're trying to avoid. That's why they're doing the right thing. So one of the things that we teach them is that, you know, you have to do the right thing because it's the right thing and it will help you. So now that forms part of their character. Once that is in, it's easier to teach these other things. Because now when you're teaching them a skill, they are quick to learn that skill, not because, they, or cause, not because the coach says it, but because they know this is going to be helpful to me. And that has been our secret. So it's easier to push them extra, because when you want to push them extra, they will not complain, because they know, oh, this is for me, let me do the extra. So before you know it, in a very short time, you have a very efficient team. As a Mwambia Asante Sana, do many of my teammates, what wengi wanya tulianza na ushule, si wengi wali maliza, wengi wali jiengage na vitu zingine. But yeah, I yeah, was strict na basketball. So I need keep sana yeah, from other things. My motivation uh, is the fact that uh, at some point I'm, I'm, I'm creating a platform where this kid will be independent. Yeah, Because you don't want a situation where a kid is born in the slums, they grow up in the slums, they get a house close to the house, because that happens. So they become neighbors to their parents. Uh, before you know it, they are married as a neighbor to their parents. So their life is circled around the same community. And it happens a lot. So we want to get kids out. Uh, I want these kids to come to the program, play basketball, go to the universities, learn new things, you know, get challenged uh, to achieve bigger things so that they know that life is not all about being here. There's so much outside there. And when we went with the kids to Arusha, they were crossing border for the first time. And most of them were excited. Finally, I'm out of the country. No, to them it does not matter whether it's Arusha or no, they're out of the country. When they come back, they don't want to stay in one place. They believe, I want to go out, I want to see other places. So to me, that, that is great motivation. Because I've, uh, uh, having worked with this kid, they have, you know, they have a change of mentality and know, ah, okay, so there's much to life. Now, and the future plan is actually to actually just reach more kids, uh, get more kids on the program, get more kids to play, actually have a platform where now, even after they finish you know, university and they move on their lives, you can always bring them back as alumni you know, to come and pick up others, because it's always one person picking up the other. So that's what we're we'll seeing ourselves uh, going forward. A piece of advice, especially to coaches who work with, uh, with young kids, let's not focus on winning. I know winning is nice. It's fun when you win and you have medals and trophies, but let's not focus on winning. Let's not train them to win. Let's train them to be better people. 
Because once they are better people, once they have self-discipline, eventually they'll win. Because self-discipline has a way of pushing someone to reach out for the best. And eventually they'll win. But if you focus on training them to win, then they end up being good players without discipline. They end up being good players without characters. No team will take them. No university will take them. No high school will take them. No club will take them. But if you teach them to have the best characters, then they will attract people to just come and work with them. They may not be the best by then, but because of their character and self-discipline, someone will want to work with them because they see the potential of you know, having uh, a good citizen or a better person. Yeah.